Hi there. Any idea what all these alphabets mean? There's A, there's G, there's C, there's T. Well, that's the genetic code. The recipe that makes us. But the question always is, what does this combination of nitrogen base really mean? Who understands it? Well, follow me on BioWorld to find out which part of our cells can interpret the meaning of the genetic code. The answer to the question lies in the molecule called RNA. I hope you have watched part one of nucleic acid where I have introduced the structure of DNA. So in this video, I'll focus on RNA. RNA is short for ribonucleic acid. RNA is a much shorter molecule compared to DNA. Besides that, RNA is only made up of a single polynucleotide chain. Its pentose sugar is made up of ribose and the nitrogen bases are similar in having adenine, guanine and cytosine but different because it doesn't have thymine. Instead, it has uracil. There are altogether three different types of RNA called the mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. Let's have a look at the detailed difference between these three types of RNA. mRNA is short for messenger RNA. rRNA is short for ribosomal RNA and the tRNA is short for transfer RNA. The mRNA is, as mentioned earlier, shorter than a DNA molecule. However, among the three RNAs, mRNA happens to be the longest. The structure of the messenger RNA is linear, although here it appears as if it were a helix. But this structure is not maintained since there are no hydrogen bonds. So the messenger RNA can straighten itself to become linear in structure. The messenger RNA is synthesized in the nucleus from the DNA molecule. Here is the DNA double strand, antiparallelly arranged. The first strand is arranged 3' prime to 5'. Prime. The second strand is arranged 3' prime from the top to 5' prime at the bottom. To synthesize a messenger RNA, what will happen is this double helix DNA will have to unwind, that is, it will separate. And then enzymes will synthesize the messenger RNA by copying the genetic code on the DNA. But the copying mechanism is not exactly the same. So that is why we don't call it copying, we call it transcription. The transcription process involves enzymes that will transcript the genetic code of the DNA from the 3' prime end to the 5' prime end. And you can notice there is complementary base pairing between the DNA molecule and the mRNA molecule. For example, when there is thymine on the DNA, there is adenine on the RNA. When there is cytosine on the DNA, there is guanine on the RNA. However, when there is adenine on the DNA, there is uracil on the RNA. So this is how the mRNA is synthesized in the nucleus through the process of transcription. Let's now discuss the role of the messenger RNA. 
The messenger RNA becomes important because of two problems faced by the DNA. The first problem is that DNAs are too big. They cannot exit the nucleus to enter the cytoplasm. Now, the cytoplasm is where all biochemical processes happen. So that is why the information from the DNA has to reach the cytoplasm. The second problem of the DNA is that the DNA contains all of the genetic information necessary for the synthesis of an organism. But a cell only uses a small tiny part of the genetic code. So how do we transfer a small tiny bit of genetic code from the nucleus to the cytoplasm? The mRNA will help to do this. Firstly, it will carry out transcription. When doing transcription, the mRNA will copy a segment of the DNA and form the messenger RNA. Now, the messenger RNA was copied from a small part of the code in the DNA. So, the messenger RNA will be a small molecule. It will be small enough to exit the nucleus through the nuclear pore. So this is the messenger RNA's second function. That is to carry the information from the DNA into the cytoplasm in the form of an mRNA. Next, we have to understand what is the code that is being transcripted onto the mRNA. To read the code, we have to read it 3 by 3. This is called the triplet base codon. And it has to be read from the 5 prime to the 3 prime direction, meaning that it must be read as G, C, U and not U, C, G. I would also like to point out that on the DNA, the sequence of the nitrogen bases are called the triplet base code. In the mRNA, it is called codon. And on the DNA, the direction is from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. Whereas in the mRNA, it is from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Now, once we have arranged the codon, what do they mean? To interpret the meaning, we need to refer to this table of codon. Now, don't panic. You don't have to memorize this table. If questions are tested on this, the table is provided. Now, that's a relief, right? Okay, but let's find out how to use the table. Now, we look at the first codon, GCU. So, we have to locate that in this table, you can see that the codons starting with G are on the fourth row and the codons that have the second nitrogen base as C is in the second table here. And if we locate GCU, it is the codon for the amino acid alanine. Now, if you have made a mistake with the direction and decided that the codon is UCG, that is over here, UCG, you can see that the amino acid is serine, which will be incorrect. Okay, let's try identifying the amino acids for the other two codons. Let's look for AGG. Remember, don't look for GGA. Eh? Look for AGG. You can find it here for the amino acid arginine. And finally, CAU. Can you locate it before I identify it? CAU is for the amino acid histidine. So, now we understand the meaning of the triplet base codon. And we can use these amino acids to construct a polypeptide. But as 
the question mark asks, who will do this reading inside the cell? The answer is in the next two RNAs. This is the ribosomal RNA. It is shorter than the messenger RNA, but it is the most abundant, meaning that out of the three RNAs, the rRNA has the highest percentage. If you look at its structure, it is a helix, but take note, it is a single helix. That means it is only made up of one polynucleotide strand. And this structure is maintained by these black lines here, which are the hydrogen bonds. rRNA are synthesized inside the nucleus, but by the instruction of the nucleolus. Then that rRNA will move to the cytoplasm. I've moved it here because I don't have enough space in the cytoplasm to continue with the discussion. But in the cytoplasm, what the rRNA will do is it will form the organelle called the ribosome. The ribosome is important because it is the meeting point for the other two RNAs. That is, the messenger RNA that contains the codon and the tRNA that is going to help complete the process of protein synthesis. This is the tRNA, transfer RNA. Firstly, let's talk about its structure. Its shape is called the clover leaf shape. Now, this is what a clover leaf looks like. And you can see it has lots of hydrogen bonds in between to help maintain this clover leaf shape. The tRNA is synthesized in the cytoplasm. Now, let's have a look at the more simplified version of the transfer RNA. It has three loops maintained by the hydrogen bond. The shorter end here is the five prime end and the longer end here is the three prime end. The most important loop is the middle loop, which contains a nitrogen based sequence, which we call the triplet base anti codon in the direction of three prime to five prime. Now, the word transfer here must indicate that this molecule is going to transfer something. What it is going to transfer actually are the amino acids. So, the amino acid that is connected to the anticodon here will attach to the three prime end of the tRNA. How will the tRNA know? which amino acid to transfer? Well, that depends on the triplet anticodon here. However, there is no anticodon table for us to refer to. Therefore, to determine the amino acid, we have to revert back to the mRNA table. So when the anticodon is CGA, the mRNA will have to be the complementary base pair that is C to G, G to C, and A to U. And since the anticodon is 3 prime to 5 prime, the mRNA is going to be 5 prime to 3 prime. So now we can refer to the codon chart where the codon is written in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, anticodon CGA is actually complementary to the codon GCU. And if we locate GCU, it is referring to the amino acid alanine. So, the tRNA now knows it is supposed to attach to the amino acid alanine. 
So this is how the tRNA completes itself by determining the amino acid that is matching to its anticodon and then attaching the amino acid to its 3' end. Let's now discuss how the three RNAs work together to carry out protein synthesis. The whole process happens at the organelle called the ribosome. The ribosome is constructed by the rRNA. It is the meeting point between the mRNA containing the triplet base codon and the tRNA containing the triplet base anticodon and the specific amino acid. So here we have the codon GCU and the anticodon CGA which interprets into the amino acid alanine. We look at the second set of codon. And the tRNA will read it as anticodon UCC, which matches the amino acid arginine. Then the next codon will be read by the next tRNA as GUA, which is specific to the amino acid histidine and so on. So this is the process that we call as translation where the tRNA will select the specific amino acid according to the triplet base anticodon in the second loop and then it will bring that amino acid to the ribosome where the anticodons of the tRNA will pair with the codons on the mRNA. Condensation will happen between the amino acids up here leading to the synthesis of protein. The details of translation as well as transcription will be taught to you in semester 3 of STPM. The role of the DNA and RNA are interlinked. The DNA in the nucleus stores the genetic information the mRNA will copy that information in the form of a transcription and travel to the ribosome, which is constructed by the rRNA. And the ribosome is the meeting point for the third RNA, that is the tRNA, where the tRNA will translate the genetic information to synthesize protein. So that concludes our topic on nucleic acid. Bye-bye and see you soon.